Ja, vielen Dank. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Ähm, willkommen zu dem Vortrag. Uh, sorry. Welcome to the uh, presentation on energy efficient heat pumps with Option XL low GWP HFO refrigerants for buildings renovation. So this is the focus on residential heat pumps and um, their comparison uh, between new buildings and renovation buildings. After a short introduction, I will point out the special needs for building renovation versus new buildings. Um, I will show you an overview on refrigerants and their com performance comparison. Then I will have focus on emissions and um, talk a little about way to success, how to get to the results that I've presented before. What is the environment that we are pl playing in? We have to reduce CO2 emissions, we have to uh, reduce uh, fossil fuel um, applications. Heating and cooling in buildings make 40% of the total energy consumption. So it's a big portion of energy that it's worth to have a view on and to improve um, the energy consumption and to, uh, the way to produce this energy. In general, how can we um, reduce CO2 emissions versus gas and oil boilers? This is just a calculation without going into detail on which heat pump, which refrigerant, which design. It's just presuming that on the left column we have the new building with 5,000 kilowatt hour per, per year and 20,000 a uh, kilowatt hour per year for a renovation building, four times more energy requested. And SCOP for the heat pump 3.5, it's quite quite good one, but we should look into future and, and target to, to the best and not to the worst. Um, an average CO2 equivalent per kilowatt uh, electrical capacity uh, of 300 gram. Um, in Germany, we are still around 400. So it's a little bit view into future. Um, with these calculations and the contents of two, respectively three kilogram um, of refrigerant, we come to these CO2 emissions and the same for gas and oil boilers. Comparing um, with these technologies, it's just easy, rough calculation. We uh, can reduce 61% versus gas boilers and 71% versus oil boilers, just with this general view. This is a copy of the German um, energy certification of any building that you need to have, need to issue, and just to show which kind of um, efficiencies we are focusing on. Here again, the requirements 5,000 kilowatt hour per year and 20,000 a square meter for 140 for a one family house leads to these numbers 35.7 kilowatt hour per square meter a year and to energy efficiency A which is average new building. For the renovation building it's much more energy that we need and we land in efficiency class E, average uh, renovation building, just as the frame that we are talking about. What is about the quantity? You might have thought that the most uh, projects will be on new buildings, now it's vice versa. We have two thirds of renovation projects and just one third new buildings. So not just that it's higher requirements, even the quantity is higher. What are the special needs? Here I have compared new building with renovation building. First, the relative heating capacity, as already seen, 35 watt per square meter for a new building, whereas we need 100 to 150 per square meter for the renovation building. The absolute heating capacity, 5 to 8 kilowatt for a new building, and 10 to 15 for a renovation building. For sanitary hot water, I said 60 degrees is the same, same requirement. But for the heating, space heating system, for new building, we can use 
underground or uh, surface heating with 35 degree water, whereas for renovation building we need 55 degree if you want to use the radiators which are installed by the gas and oil boiler system. Yeah, and the temp maximum temperature lift, if we talk about air to water heat pump, we want to, it to work also in deep winter time. At minus 25 degrees environmental temperature, we should also be able to heat up the house. And still we want to have 55 degrees C to heat the space. So it's minus 25 to plus 55. And as we remember, 69% of the quantity of the projects, sorry. So um, this is about the requirements. Now about the refrigerants. Um, most commonly used 410A and two refrigerants that we have designed as a replacement for 410A with their a few um, numbers, GWP and so on. Um, on the right hand side, R32, which has been proposed and, and promoted strongly in air conditioning and heating system, and a refrigerant which was not directly in the focus for heat pumps, 454C, uh, with a GWP below 150. And this is the refrigerant that I would like to focus on with this presentation. On the left-hand side, you see, uh, this is based um, on comparison results, just as calculation, based on uh, calculation tool with uh, refprop data, so public um, physical properties. Left-hand side, the capacity relative to 410A. So you see here 100%. This is reflecting or representing 410A. And the different colors, 454B. Blue is outdoor temperature 7, water 55. Uh, orange is outdoor 2, water 55. Gray is outdoor minus 7, water 55. And yellow is outdoor minus 15 water 55. So for all operating conditions, you see that the capacities of these two refrigerants which have been designed as a replacement for 110A are very close to 100%. So no wonder. R32 is even above for the lower temperature lift. And 454C, we would say it's not a candidate because it's just around 60% of capacity. But what does this mean? We need a little bit bigger compressor in order to have the same capacity. Just please keep this in mind, because I will point out this later. But what about COP, the efficiency? The two uh, replacement refrigerants are performing quite well, except for the lower ambient temperature, the high temperature lift. We have a little bit less performance, le less efficiency. For R32, um, this is theoretical, theoretical calculation. So even these high temperature lift will not be possible to do in the standard circuit because the, um, uh, the, the, the um, high pressure temperature will rise too high. So you have to destroy energy to, to run at this point. But it's just calculated and, and the COP will drop tremendously. But here, the 454C, shows a very good performance. It's in all the operating conditions above the efficiency of 410A. Exactly, and mainly on the low temperature, ambient temperature, there we need the efficiency, where we need to produce the heat when it's cold outside. Um, now let's have a view on the emissions, the direct emissions based on the DWP for all the refrigerants, and what we want to compare is 410A and 454C. Based on uh, 10 years emissions, so we can say we have a reduction down to 6, respectively 7% in emissions, just by switching from 410A to 454C. The total emissions, as just as a reminder, I've shown it before in the comparison with uh, oil and gas boilers, just to repeat the numbers. Indirect emi emissions means the emissions caused by energy production to make the system run. 
to produce electricity. If we look this, at this total overview on the left-hand side, 10 years for 410A, the blue one is the indirect emission caused by energy production to make the system run. And the orange bar is the direct emission caused by GWP, calculated based on a leakage rate, annual leakage rate of 3.5%, which is quite high. On the right-hand side, the same picture for 454C. You see the orange bar is very tiny, very small. And the indirect emissions by electricity are the same due to the fact that we have calculated the same COP. It's just calculation. So the blue bars are the same, but the direct emissions caused by GWP are much less. Let's have a closer look to that. The ratio of the direct emissions to the total emissions the left on the dark blue, it's 410A, 34%, respectively 12, close to 13% for renovation building. And for 454C, we just have two, respectively less than 1% for 454C. And as I mentioned before, the leakage rate calculated here is 3.5%. Talking to OEM manufacturers, you will get numbers around 1 or even less than 1%. So if you divide by 3.5, we can say at an average, we are below 1% direct emissions compared to total emissions. So GWP is not the decisive factor here, as we are below 150. This is, an, for me, an important message. So we are talking about 1% of emissions caused by the refrigerant itself. Yeah, so the theoretical calculations have shown a high potential in efficiency. And uh, with the efficiency and low GWP, um, strong reduction in emissions. But important is that the components of the refrigeration circuit have to be designed around the refrigerant. A drop-in is not a solution. So taking a system, just exchanging refrigerant will not work, although it's not allowed to change from A1 to A2L, except you qualify all the components. And the refrigeration circuit design also has to be adopted. And uh, by this, you can increase capacity and efficiency on top of what I've shown. And especially 454C, um, shows very high efficiency possibilities. Here, this is a copy of a, of a standard compressor catalog. And I would like to point out the envelope. The black one is for 454C. And the interesting thing is that at minus 30 degree evaporation, you can achieve 65 degree condensing. That means without any further heating support, this is standard scroll compressor technology, you can heat up to 65 condensing. That means you can produce 60 degrees water. No electrical heater requested, even at very low ambient temperature. The same compressor with a red dotted line performs much poorer, much less, with 410A. It provides just 45 degrees C at minus 30. So here, electrical heater would, would be needed or any, any other additional heating system. On the right-hand side, this is a dedicated 410A compressor, which EVI um, technology. The solid line shows the operation without EVI. So you just achieve 35 degrees condensing at minus 30 evaporation, which you need at minus 25 environment. And just with EVI, you can achieve 65. That means you need to pay more money to have this compressor work with the EVI external controls and so on. And this additional cost can compare and uh, compensate the cost that you need for a little bit higher capacity or bigger size for 454C compressor, which is a standard score one. So it's more or less equal. So the disadvantage is compensated by this design. 
yeah, conclusion and summary, uh, heat pumps can help reduce CO2 emissions in general, whatever kind of heat pump it is. 70% should be the target to reduce CO2 emissions. Low GWP HFOs can help to make the system being very efficient and reduce the emissions below 1% based on the GWP. And it depends on the leakage. The tighter the system, the less this number. All the components have to be adapted from A1 to A2L. And the system has to be designed according to the refrigerant. Drop-in doesn't work. Yeah, and using renewable electricity will even improve the total footprint. This is not a miracle, but yeah, it's a truth. So thank you for your attention, and I'm open for questions if there are any. Thank you.